When I tested the Liquid Freezer 3 on the Intel 285K, something just didn't feel right with the contact frame. It felt like the thick rad wasn't doing what it should have. And uh, this Pro version fixes that. Welcome to Machines More. So you might have seen the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 Pro series rolling out slowly. 360 millimeter version came out first. And finally, I can tell you about the 240 version that I've been testing. There's a lot of similarities and overlap with the regular Liquid Freezer 3. So I won't cover the features uh, in full. This will mainly be focused on the changes with the Pro version and how it impacts the performance for LGA 1851. I tested this with the 285K and saw some dramatic differences, so we'll focus on those improvements today. Real quick before I start, I did want to let you know that Arctic provided the test unit here. A big thanks to them. However, I am not paid by them for this review, and this is a product of my independent testing. So if you like content like this, please make sure you're subscribed. Unit I tested is the 240mm ARGB version. It still features a thick radiator with thick and stiff tubing, pump block with copper culpate and an attached 60mm VRM fan that comes onto this uh, plate here. But uh, first change here is that they went back and reworked the Intel contact frame. And so this type of thing is the only way to install these on LGA 1700 and 1851. Now this is the old plate. Uh, the new one seems to be improved. And they also added in a 4.5 millimeter shift up the CPU socket to better center the pump block uh, around the hotspot location. For AMD installs, the unit retains the shift downwards that is built into the mounting bars. So with the new Intel install being done this way without changing the coal plates dimensions on the pump block, the bottom of the LGA 1700 or 1851 CPU will have a small section exposed. And uh, as you can see here, the bottom of the IHS here made absolutely no contact. It's not likely to cause a significant issue, but it's something to note nonetheless. When you mount this up, ideally you place the elbows at the bottom, like the regular LF3 and with how much footprint the block, the VRM fan cover, and the elbows occupy, that means you have to be extra careful, especially if you're using a mini ITX board. Uh, as an example, I tested with the ASUS Z890-I, uh, that was for consistency with all my other testing, and you can't mount on this board without removing the M.2 heatsink and the add-on board. So that is basically a no-go for that. And it's also not compatible with a lot of ITX boards, a flat out. So if the pump block will not fit your board with the elbows down position, the upwards offset means that fitting it elbows on the top is now even more difficult because if you had a restriction in that dimension, now it's four and a half millimeters towards that uh, side now. In general, I really don't recommend this for mini ITX builds because of the restrictive mounting. Arctic does publish a compatibility list on their product site where you can check your board's fit, so I recommend starting there first. The other change here is the fans. The LF3 uses P12s, which are great fans, but along with the tight fin density on the 38 millimeter radiator, the ensemble needed a bit of a boost, and that's where the new P12 Pros come in. They feature a fluid dynamic bearing, and like the P12 Max, the blades are interconnected with a ring and they go up to a 3000 RPM max. And for my testing, these are definitely more high performing than the P12 with the added benefit of giving more headroom. The P12s on the LF3 topped out at, a, at only 1800 RPM. So definitely that unit could have used a little bit more oomph, especially on the 240 version. So let's just jump into the testing because I think this is the most important uh, part of the review here. So noise normalized first. Three levels versus the Atmos Stealth, uh, the Be Quiet Silent Loop 3, and the LF3, and what I might consider some of the highest performing 240 AIOs on the market now. Right away, you can see the massive improvement over the original here. And this is now definitely the best performing unit here. And I think with the contact plate redesign, we are seeing the 38 millimeter radiator live up to its potential. Now the fans on the Be Quiet and the Cooler Master are very good, but it didn't make too much sense that the LF3 with decent fans and a 38 millimeter rad was losing to the 27 millimeter thick rad on these other units by that much, right? And Arctic's internal testing showed about a nine degree gap between the Pro and the regular LF3 in the 360 flavor. 
And I'm definitely seeing that at least uh, with the 240. In fact, a much bigger gap here with as much as 14 degrees. Although I think most of that gap is uh, really from the LF3 underperforming on the 285K as this unit did, did do quite well when I tested with AM4. Uh, the performance there was on par with other high-end 240s. I was curious what the impact from just the contact frame was, and uh, so I moved the LF3's P12s over and they ran the testing at exactly the same RPM. And as I suspected, the lion's share of the thermal improvements came from the rework of the contact frame and the added offset. The new fans are of course better, and that is additional performance on top of the fixed uh, contact frame. New fans do go up significantly faster, of course, at a huge added noise penalty. And for most use cases, there's absolutely no reason to go this fast with this much added noise. And the added benefit is disproportionate to the increase in noise. Let's take a quick listen here for the noise samples. As tested, this is going to be the top performing 240 along with the Cooler Master Atmos Stealth. And at launch, it will come in at a very attractive pricing, which is 77 US for the black version and 90 for the ARGB black like I have here. And that regular pricing will come in at 112 and 125 US respectively. Given that if you are okay with the inflexible mounting position and you can fit the bigger footprint pump block in your build, and you have clearance uh, for the thicker rad, you know, a lot of ifs, then absolutely this is a super high performing unit to check out. And uh, otherwise I think the biggest downside and thing you have to watch out for with the LF3 design in general is the compatibility and the block is pretty tall as well. And the last thing to mention is that the LF3 Pro, just like the LF3 comes with a six year warranty from Arctic. So they've uh, got you supported there. Hope you found this info helpful. If so, please give a like. I will also have the links down below for the units with the launch pricing. Make sure you are subscribed and a big thanks for watching today.